This is Walk to Wealth, episode four. My name is John Mendez, and I am your host. Welcome to Walk to Wealth, where I motivate and inspire people new to the world of personal finance by letting you all in behind the scenes of someone who's still on his way. Welcome, everyone, to episode four of the Walk to Wealth podcast. For all the people returning, thanks for the loyalty and support. For all the new listeners, thanks for taking the time to check out this episode. You guys are in for a show. And in today's episode, I'm going to be going over my journey with credit so far. And I'm going to be covering pretty much the cards that I have, getting denied a couple times, almost maxing out my card, a couple of my credit limit increases, and more. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So you might be asking, how did I start building my credit? Well, if you listen to the first episode, I began by downloading this app called Self. And what Self is, it's a free credit builder app. And pretty much you can choose between four different payment amounts. There's a $25, $35, $48, and $150. And if I'm not mistaken, you can also choose two payment term. So there's 12 months and there's also 24 months. And pretty much what you do is um, you just make automatic monthly payments or you can do them manually, but you make monthly payments and you pay the amount that you choose for the time period that you choose. And then um, pretty much they report to all three credit bureaus. And after you finish making your payments, you get all your money back minus the interest obviously, because they need to make money too because they're a free app. And the good thing about them as well is that they also offer a secured card. with, And that secured card, after a while, I'm not too familiar with the time period, but it eventually graduates into an unsecured card. They usually start you off with a low limit, but it's good to start building your credit, which is what the app is really for. And it gets you starting to build the right disciplines to make sure that you're financially responsible and you're not going to blow a bunch of money once you get an actual unsecured credit card. Shortly after I applied for the self app um, back in July, but I think two weeks after, I then applied for my Bank of America custom cash rewards card. And I was approved for $500, which isn't a lot of money, but that was my first technically credit card that I ever had it's not my first line of credit because self is technically a line of credit but that's my first credit card they approved me for five hundred dollars and they had a three percent back on any category of your choice gives you two percent back at grocery stores and wholesale clubs and one percent back on everything else it also has no annual fee which is always a bonus and speaking about bonuses it had a sign up bonus as well I can't remember too well what that bonus actually was, but I do know that they had a bonus and they have a current bonus right now. And I want to go check the day before the day that I'm recording this. And that was not the same bonus that I had. So it's a little bit different now, but that was the first credit card that I applied for and got approved for. I then started to use Credit Karma and Experian to check my scores. Credit Karma shows you your TransUnion score and your Equifax score. And then Experian obviously shows you your Experian score. And these scores are just a ballpark estimate, pretty much. They give you an idea of where your credit score is. So you can't use them for everything. For example, if you are planning to buy a house, the score that your lender um, uses to pre-approve you is not going to be the same score that they have on your Credit Karma. And that's because they have... There's two main models to credit scores. There's the Vantage score and the FICO score. And then within those models, there's many different models. So just use Credit Karma and Experian as a ballpark to give you an idea of where your score is. But if you want an exact score, you you can go on myfico.com. And as of the day of this recording, it's $29.95 to get your exact scores from Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So I know when I started off, my first card was the Bank of America one. But whenever anyone is starting, I tell them to get the Discover It Secured card. Discover 
is a very great option for most people building and or fixing their credit. They have great customer service that's U.S.-based, and their secured card also graduates to an unsecured card. I'm not too sure how long it takes. It's all dependent on you, I believe. But Discover is a really good option. They have no annual fees on their unsecured card as well, so that's always good. But now, let's get back to my story. So, in December, I applied for a credit limit increase for my Bank of America card via telephone. I just looked up the number, and then they they gave me one of the dialer things. I think I had to, like, press a couple numbers, and I finally got a representative on the phone. And so, I initially asked for 2000 and they denied me, but they countered back with 1.5, so 1500 And I was like, sure, I'll take it. This is better than what I have currently. So that tripled my credit limit right there. And this was also a soft pull, so it didn't hurt my score at all. And not all credit limit increases are soft pulls. Some companies like um, Chase do hard pulls when you manu- manually ask for a credit limit increase. And after I got that bump in my credit limit, my credit score also took a jump. So, I finally broke the 700 credit score mark on Credit Karma. So, that was super exciting for me. After that, I then applied for the Chase Freedom Flex card, which is one of the beginner tier cards that Chase has to offer. And at the time, they had a welcome bonus of 20,000 points after $500 spend in three months, which was super doable and realistic for me. So I decided to apply. And just a couple of the highlights, it has 5% back on quarterly rotating categories, 5% back on grocery store purchases, 5% back on travel purchased through the Chase portal, 3% back on dining and drugstore purchases, 1% back on everything else, $0 annual fee. And to top it all off, It's a World Elite MasterCard, so you get access to a 24-7 concierge service. And they pretty much, if you ever need any planning for a vacation, you need an itinerary or anything, you can reach out to them and they'll have that all set up for you with different options to choose from and the times and the reservations and everything. It's great. And as I said, they initially approved me for $1,800, which is tripled or more than tripled what I got initially approved for with the Bank of America card. So now my story starts to take a nosedive in the wrong direction. In January, I was about like $3, I think, from maxing out the card. And that's literally the month after. I got too caught up trying to get the welcome bonus and spent more and then some. And so that was super bad for me because that actually made my score drop, which was kind of sucked. And I got carried away, honestly. The good thing is, though, I had money saved up because I had a reserve built up with the college refunds that I had. So I still paid it off in full at the end of the month. But that definitely dropped my score. And that definitely taught me a lesson that it's very dangerous once you get these credit cards and you start getting higher limits to know you just start swiping and swiping and not keeping track of anything. After almost maxing out my card, I still paid it off in full. So my credit score didn't drop too, too bad. In February, I decided to apply for the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. And that's a kind of like a mid-tier Chase travel card that they have to offer. And I was instantly denied. And just a little bit of a pro tip. As soon as you get denied for any of the cards that you apply for, try to look up on Google to see if they have a reconsideration line. And... If they do, give it a call and try to get on the phone with a rep. Once you're on the phone with this rep, just tell them your story and answer whatever they ask you and pretty much tell them, ask them if you can get an approval instead. And sometimes they can manually approve your application. So I did that and I was still denied. And what the rep had pretty much told me is that although my credit score was pretty decent, I think it was around 720 at the time. I lacked comparable alternatives, pretty much meaning that since the Chase Sapphire Preferred card had a minimum credit limit of 5000 at the time, my Bank of America card was 1.5K and my Chase card was 1.8K. So that combined came out to 33 
and the minimum credit limit for the Chase Sapphire Preferred is 5000 And so even with my two other cards combined, I wasn't anywhere near, anywhere near close to that. So they pretty much instantly denied me and I had no chance of getting approval at that point. So in March, me and my dad were talking and he has his own landscaping company. He's been doing that for two going on three years now. And he needed some help with his business because he needed to buy some new equipment. And anyone that knows about landscaping, the equipment, especially new equipment, is not cheap. So I was going to apply for a personal loan of 10000 or 11000 I believe. And I was in, in denied. And the reason why I was denied is because I lacked long enough credit history. So although I had a good score, I believe it was still around 720 I had less than a year of credit history. And so they instantly denied me. And so then in March and in February, that was two months of back-to-back hard pulls and denials. So whenever you get a hard pull, your credit score drops. And because I was denied, my credit score was pretty much dropping for no reason. In April, things finally started to take a turn for the better. And I was applying for the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which is another like beginner tier card that Chase has to offer. And I was instantly approved for $500, which is significantly less than the first Chase card that I got approved for. But I also came off of two months of back-to-back card pulls and denials. So, you know, I probably didn't look like the most qualified candidate. Just a general rule of thumb, you typically want to wait 30 to 60 or maybe 90 days in between applying for new cards or new lines of credit just to make sure that you don't get too many consecutive or frequent hard pulls. But, you know, your miles may vary, meaning it may be different for you. But that's just a general rule of thumb. And so the Chase Freedom Unlimited card had a 20K point welcome bonus with $500 spent in three months. And just a little bit of the highlights for this card, it has 5% back on grocery stores, 5% back on travel book through the Chase portal, 3% dining, and drugstores, and then 1.5% everything else. It also has no annual fee. So it's a pretty good card to have in your arsenal. And so I got approved for that in April. The summer of 2021 also went pretty well for me. I got a organic credit limit increase from Chase for my Freedom Flex card, and they boosted it up to 3.6 thousand, which is double what I had initially. I applied for a manual credit limit increase on my Bank of America card and they approved me for 2000 And I also tried this like more advanced dispute technique where I found it on YouTube. And pretty much what you do is that you mail out a letter to the credit bureaus and you try to dispute the hard inquiries that you have. And it's a little more complicated, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but it pretty much worked out. So I got a little bit of a bump up from in my credit score from the two credit limit increases and me disputing my hard inquiries in the summer. So around the September time, I was looking into getting a new card. And it's been quite a while since my last card was approved. It was back in April, the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. And I was deciding, you know, which card should I get next? You know, which card has a good welcome bonus? Which card would make sense? And I was looking at Chase because Chase has a 524 rule where if you apply and get five credit cards within a 24-month period, whether or not it's with Chase, it doesn't matter. If you get five credit cards within 24 months, if you try to apply for a sixth card with Chase, you're going to get instantly denied. So I was trying to get a Chase card and banging out as many as I can before the 524 rule took into, into play. And around this time, I was also about to become a licensed agent. And anyone that got their real estate license knows There's quite a bit of fees that you have to pay once you become an agent. You know, you got to pay to get your license. You got to pay for MLS access. You have to pay your brokerage, depending on where you go. There's a a bunch of fees you have to pay. So I knew that going in beforehand. And I was kind of deciding that I wanted to get the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, which is the card that I got denied for initially back in February. And the good thing about this card is that it has a 100K welcome bonus. But you have to spend $5,000 in three months, which is way more than I can afford. I applied for the card and I was initially approved for $5,000. 
I didn't have to call a reconsideration line. It was instantly approved. And so the strategy that I use is I use the card to pay for my real estate stuff when I started off. And then also, because I have a good relationship with my best friend and I trust her, I let her use the card to make her purchases or whatever. And then I would just have her sell me or give me the money cash. And then by doing that, I was able to come up with the $5,000 spent in three months and get the 100 k welcome bonus. And um, it's it's not a good strategy. I would not recommend it. It was it really irresponsible. It was a bad idea, but it worked out for me. So thankfully, I learned my lesson and I'm not going to do it again, even though it did benefit me. And just a couple of the highlights on this card it has um, 5% back on travel, book the Chase Portal, 3% back on dining, 2% back on all other travel purchases. It has a 95 annual do- annual fee. But with all the benefits, it definitely weighs out. And then the two main benefits that are really good is that all your points that you get through your chase cards, you can then put it on that one travel card. And then all the points on that travel card get a 1.25 multiplier if they're used on the chase travel portal, which is great. But it gets even better because those points you can use to also transfer out to their travel partners. And these points, once they get transferred out, if you do a little bit of homework, these points tend to have a better redemption rate when they're transferred over. Another little benefit that they have is that every anniversary, you get 10% of back in points of whatever you spent in that year. And I forgot to mention, the last thing is that it's partially a metal card. So this card has a little bit more weight to it. And that definitely is a little bit of a flex factor right there for me. It's not a full metal card, but if you bang it on the table, and I definitely banged it on a bunch of tables when I first got it, but that was definitely a big flex factor having my first partially metal card. So now in December of 2021, I decided that I didn't want to commingle my personal and my business expenses. And it was also about that time where I wanted to apply for a new card. So I started looking up potential cards that I could apply to and decided that I wanted to apply to the Chase and Cash card, which is a business credit card. And so I emailed out somebody over at Chase in my local Chase branch. And I met with her. She was, I guess, like someone from the business department. And she told me that I had to get a DBA so and an EIN. So I got an EIN for my real estate business. And then I also got a doing business as name. But that's what a DBA is. And then I was waiting to hear back from her. I emailed her. And she never got back to me. So I just decided to take matters into my own hands and I applied online. So initially I wasn't declined, but I also wasn't accepted. They said that they'll be giving me a message in seven to 10 business days. And so I decided to call the reconsideration line like anyone else would do. And they sent me a link to upload more info. So I was like, okay, I went to the link. I uploaded the documents that they were asking for. And then after a couple of days, I called the reconsideration line again. And then the person that I was on the phone with, they told me that they were going to mail me a form and I had to fill it out and then fax it back to them. That took a couple of days or a week, I believe. I finally received that package with the forms. And then once I filled out those forms, I faxed it over. And then one to two days later... I called the reconsideration line again just to make sure that they had it, and they finally approved me. And so I was approved for $3,000, which isn't the most that I have, but it's something. And so pretty much uh, that card has 5% back on office and supply stores. It also has 5% on internet, cable, and phone services. It has 2% on gas and restaurants, 1% everything else, no annual fee, 12 months, zero APR, which I normally never care about, but I'm going to use this to get my real estate business off the ground. And normally when you look at credit cards, don't look at the APR because you plan on paying it off in full every month. And if you pay it off in full, there's no interest for anything to accrue on. So pay your your credit cards in full every month. This card has a welcome bonus of 75,000 points if you spend $7,500 in three months. I'm going to get creative by coming up with a strategy. I think I got a pretty decent strategy on in mind. So the day that I'm recording this is New Year's Eve. 
And I normally don't tell you guys the date I'm I'm recording, but it's funny because I was in the middle of recording and I was like, hey, let me just take a quick lunch break. And the idea popped into my mind when I was talking about the Bank of America stuff. I was like, hey, you know, I haven't applied for a credit limit increase in a while. Let me see if I can apply. So right before I went to go eat lunch, I went on the Bank of America website and I re- requested a credit limit increase to 3000 And they instantly approved me for that. So I'm going to be getting another bump to my credit. In terms of my next card, I haven't really thought too much into it. I am thinking of potentially getting another Chase Inc. card just because the business cards with Chase, although they are a hard pull on your personal credit score, they don't apply to the 524 rule. So I'm technically at 424 right now because the Chase Inc. cash card doesn't count. I might try to stay with the Chase Inc. line, but their welcome bonuses are a little a little hefty for me. So I might just have to go into the world of Amex or get in like another Chase travel card, like one of the Hyatt cards or one of those cards. I'm not too sure as to what my next card is going to be quite yet because I'm still trying to get my current welcome bonus. So that is my plan so far is just to keep on looking for a card that would make sense for me to get. To summarize everything, if you're new to building credit, I would suggest applying for self. Then... I would recommend getting a discovered secured card. Then I would personally recommend going to Chase because Chase does have that 524 rule. So you want to be aware of that before you start applying to a bunch of cards. And now I have personally five cards, as I said in previous episodes, that I have close to over 100,000 points now. My score right now is a 728 on Experian, 734 on Equifax and TransUnion. And I'm only about a year and a half into the credit game. Make sure you guys, when you guys get into this game, if you guys do decide to get into this game, that it is a game. And just like any other game, you can become addicted and you can catch yourself getting in too deep. And without you even realizing, you're close to maxing out your cards like I am. Or you're applying for cards that you have no business applying to. So make sure you don't do that like I did. And make sure you just play smart with your credit. And slowly keep building it up. And after some time, you'll be able to rack up enough points to start traveling for free. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Again, I am your host, John Mendez. You can find me at John Mendez underscore Realtor and at Walk to Wealth on Instagram. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a review if you're loving the podcast so far. New episodes are released every Sunday. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Take care.